everyone, my name is Steve. I'm the owner of this channel. I've also got a couple of other channels that deal with IT and telecommunications type concepts. I've been working in the IT and telecom space most of my adult life. We won't get into how long that's been, but let's say it's been more than a few years. I've decided to make a series of videos about small office networking. And the reason it needs to be done in a series is so that we can cover it in manageable chapters, progressing from the bottom layer up on through the things that build on top of it. But moreover, if it's something you're not interested in, you can skip to the next video or skip to the applicable video. And those chapters will be basic network connectivity, meaning the way that the switch or router connects to the internet and then also connects to the computer devices. The second thing will be shared file storage. So that's the ability for everyone to leave their files in some common network space where everyone can get to them. The third one will be a shared printer, all right, meaning that anyone could print to a common printer on the network. Um, the fourth one then would be Wi-Fi, which is wireless access on the network. Now we may go beyond that, but those are the four we're going to start with, and then that goes well. Maybe we'll go on and we'll talk about things like maybe IP cameras, uh, maybe shared scanners, uh, all kinds of ancillary things that we can add to a network. Okay, having said that, let's get started on the first one, which is basic network connectivity. Okay, let's get started. We need to talk about the back office hardware components of our network. And there's a few things on this table I want to cover real quickly. And I do need to give you a little bit of technical information, but I'll try to keep it to a minimum um, because that's not really the goal of this video. This video is aimed at people who are not technical and want to get their network up and running. So this right here is known as a patch cord. It's also referred to as an Ethernet cord. It might be called a Category 5 or Category 6 uh, patch cord, sometimes also called an Ethernet cord. So it goes by several different names. And an Ethernet cord is a little bit like a phone cord, except that the ends are fatter. So if you look at it up close, you've got this end that's got eight little gold pins there because there's, there's eight wires inside. And, and it, again, it does look like a phone cord, except a phone cord only has four or six. So do not try to use a telephone cord where in place of an Ethernet cord. We have to have Category 5 or Category 6 Ethernet cords to connect our network components. So Ethernet cords are used to connect components. Every one of these network components has got an Ethernet outlet on it, also referred to as a port. All right, so this is a switch, which has eight ports on it. This is a cable modem, which has got a spot for the cable connector to go on but there's also an Ethernet port on there. This is a plain old um, router switch combination which has got uh, one Ethernet port for the internet service and then four switch ports to uh, plug computers to. And this is a DSL modem and this has got um, a spot for the phone cords to go in. I don't know if you can see but that's a little bit skinnier. Okay, there's only four pins there. But this, so your DSL signal, which comes on a telephone line, goes in there, and then there's there's a there's a router built into this, and then these four switch ports um, are the Ethernet ports, which go out to the computers. And so, what are these things, and why do we have to have these? Well, your modem, which can either be a cable modem or a DSL modem, is the device that's needed to take the signal either off the telephone wire or from that that coaxial cable and convert it into um, a usable network signal that we can connect an Ethernet port to. Now modems could be could be cable or telephone and also modems can also either have only one Ethernet port or they can be uh, like this is a combination unit which has got a spot for the, the phone signal but it's also got switch ports built into it. Now what's a router? Well a router is a box that's got some intelligence in it. And what it does is it, is it takes the network traffic, or where the network signals coming in from the outside world, and it keeps track of what needs to go where. So that's how it keeps track of um, when, you're, when you're watching a video or when you're sending an email, it keeps track of which computer is doing the sending and the receiving and makes sure that things come and go to and from the appropriate computer. Then lastly is a switch. Now this is a layer two dumb switch. A layer two switches, you can almost think of them as like, uh, like uh, plug strips. You know how you have, you know, if, you, if you've got a, a, a wall outlet 
Um, for electricity, and you've only got a couple of, of outlets available, you can get your plug strip and plug it in, and then you get you know six more. Well, you can almost think of a switch as the same thing. A switch is an electrical appliance that allows you to take and multiply your network signal um, from one port to many ports. So here's some example configurations of what of how things might get connected. You would have maybe say a cable modem, which has the, you know the cable signal coming in, and then there's an Ethernet port on the back. Well, because there's only one Ethernet port in there, we're going to need to go from there to a router. Now, we can't go to a switch, unfortunately. We have to go to a router. So a router is going to have a spot on the back where it says Internet. So, okay, that's where I plug in my Internet. Now, from that router, I can either make connections from there directly to the computers, or if I need more uh, uh, ports, I can hook up this dumb switch and augment my network. So when I was going from four available ports on the back there, I can take and give up one and plug it into here, and now I've just added seven more ports. All right, so I went from four to now ten. So at this point, you're going to want to make your connections to your computer. That comes down to one of two things. Either you have a wiring system, meaning that at some place in your office you've got a patch panel on the wall. This is, a cat, this is a, an Ethernet patch panel. It's got category six or category five cable coming into it. And what it does is it makes connections, um, like from here, I can take and connect from the switch to the patch panel. And that patch panel then carries a signal out to the wall outlets. So I'm gonna go from the switch port into patch panel port number one. Those wires go through the wall, maybe across the ceiling, and they come out someplace on a wall jack in your office like this, that's going to say something like data one or data two or three or four or five or six or whatever. Those one or two com correspond to the one or two on the patch panel here. So I've got this red wire sending an, an, an internet or, or you know network signal into patch panel one. So I want to connect to one on here, and then one, I mean, plug that into my computer. So now I've got a connection from the computer into the wall, through the wires, up to the ceiling, down into the back room where I've got the patch panel, which then connects right there where the red plug is, and then puts me into the network. Okay, if you do not have a uh, organized, or what they call structured cabling system, then what you could simply do is just get long 25-foot Ethernet cords, and do not go and buy them from your local Radio Shack or Best Buy because they will cost a fortune. Order them on Amazon or, or something like that. They're much more affordable. But you could take Ethernet cords and lay them across the floor in some safe manner and hopefully an unsightly manner and just connect directly from the switch ports to the computers. All right? There is any number of combinations that we could do between the way that we connect from the modems to the routers to the switches. This was just one example. Um, and what I'm going to do is, is try to talk about each one of the different examples. And then what we're going to get into next is the software changes that need to happen on the computer and on the modem to, to make the network all go together. Okay, so we'll, we'll go to that spot next.